What's up YouTube, I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know in the real world, and today I'm bringing you guys some competitive 2v2 S&D again, and this is a wager match actually, um, I've only played a couple wager matches, so I haven't uploaded one before, but uh, this was some pretty good competition, so I thought I'd go ahead and upload it, obviously we're down 0-3 right now, so it's a little bit of a challenge coming back, but we wind up doing it, from here on out I wind up going 10-2, so that's why I went ahead and cut it to here, plus, you know, it's kind of a slower gameplay, so I just wanted to get it down to where we're winning most of the time. But, um, basically, I wanted to mention real quick, the reason I didn't upload yesterday was because I had some things come up, um, that were kind of unexpected, some potentially life-changing things for me, you know, nothing bad necessarily, but just some changes, and I'm having to do some number crunching and, uh, some planning, trying to figure out what is going to happen exactly, and... I know that sounds kind of mysterious, but I'll probably make a video on it pretty soon once I have a better handle on the situation and once I know for sure what I'm going to be doing in response. But uh, basically, yeah, that's just why I didn't upload. If I get off like this again, what I'll do is I'll just upload Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then the next week get back to the Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday schedule. So just know that if you don't see a video from me on Tuesday, just expect one on Wednesday. But um, alright, getting into the topic how to find teammates for competitive Call of Duty. And I get asked this question all the time. I don't know why I haven't made one on this yet. I made one kind of similar, but it was different at the same time a while back. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this video now. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is where you can find teammates. And then I'll talk about some of the different aspects about them. So you can look for teammates on Twitter. You can look for them through playing GBs through playing clan versus clan and through playing tournaments so for me personally I think Twitter is the best option because Twitter you know you can gather information about the person pretty easily they usually have their other things linked you can look at um, just how they act as a player through their tweets and everything um, you know you can find out their different accounts like their YouTube and everything you can find their MLG rank on there usually um, and you can find a lot of stuff about somebody on Twitter, and I find it's a lot easier to, to connect to people there, because people are looking for teammates on Twitter, so it's, it's, it's easier to get in touch with people. People, I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. But, um, yeah, so that's Twitter. And then through GBs, this one and CVC kind of go together. They don't really work that well. It's kind of random, because... You know, you might face someone and it's a really close match and then you're like, oh, hey, we should team. And then they'll just be like, no, or, oh, we've already got teammates, sorry. Or they'll just think, you know, you're not that good and they don't want to team with you. So, I mean, it's an option, but it typically doesn't work out that well. So just keep that in mind. And then there's through tournaments. And this can work out pretty well, actually, although it's kind of the same thing as where it's unlikely to necessarily get teammates because people usually already have them. But... When you play tournaments, you know, you can find some really good players there. You can find some high-quality players, and you can get in touch with them after the game. You know, if you're respectful, both sides are respectful about it, you can get into a little discussion, and you never know. One thing might lead to the other, and you could start practicing with them. So, next, I want to talk about what you're looking for in your players, and I'm going to go a little bit into each thing. And first thing is you want to look for their tournament placings. So, you, right here, I'm talking about online tournament placings. You want to see if they have any, you know, obviously that can be a big factor. You want to know if they're experienced or not. Um, and distinguish between GB online tournaments and, you know, free online tournaments like Twitter tournaments. You know, try and figure out that sort of thing. Also, you want to look and see if they have any LAN experience. Um, that's something to consider as well when you're looking for teammates. Also, look for their sponsors, you know, are they, do they have sponsors at all, or do they have them, but they're kind of cheaper ones, you know, that anybody can get, um, so yeah, that's something to look at. Also, their media size, and by this I mean, you know, like their Twitter account, their YouTube, their Twitch, things of that nature, you know, how many followers do they have, are they active, what are they posting, what are they uploading, you know, just kind of look into that. Also, see if they have an organization backing them up. And if they do, look at that organization's reputation and look at how well they're known. Are they known for being people who dispute? Are they known for um, cheating sponsors or something? Or, you know, is there some sort of drama going on with them? Because you want to avoid that if at all possible. 
Uh, next thing is look at the role. Obviously, if you need an OBJ player, you don't want to be looking for somebody who only wants to play Slayer or something like that. So, you know, you got to look at the role that they're looking for and what you need on your team. Next thing is look at the age of the player. You want to find somebody fairly similar here. You know, you don't want to have somebody that's like 15 who's teaming with somebody who's 30 because you've got different, you know, areas of your life going on. You need people that are going through the same sort of things, you know, college and high school students kind of stick together and then, you know, adults out of college kind of stick together. That's the way it generally goes. And you'll also, you know, have a better understanding of each other just because the age gap isn't as big. Next thing is look at the professionalism. This is usually found through looking at their Twitter and other social media accounts. Look and see how they interact with their fans, if they have fans, and look at how they just interact with people in general. You know, you don't want somebody who's not going to be professional at all. Uh, and that also goes with personality. You know, look and see if they are just a terrible person towards other people, if they're kind, if they're generous, if they are humble when they lose, you know, things like that. Also... Look at the time zone that they're in, because realistically, you do not want some East Coast people teaming with some West Coast people. It just doesn't work out that well. Look at your time zone. Try and find people either in your time zone or the time zone next to yours, okay? That's general rule to go by. Next thing is look at the dedication of the players involved. You know, if that person is wanting to go pro and you're just wanting to have some fun on weekends... It doesn't line up. Your dedication is different on it. You know, you got to have somebody that's just going to be around the same level and willing to grind as much as you do. Next thing is look at, try and, like this, you probably won't be able to find out without asking them directly. Ask when they can practice, when they can get on, and for how long. Because if they can get on in the mornings, but then they have a part-time job in the evening, but you have a part-time job in the morning and can only get on in the evenings, then it's not going to work out. So you got to look at that, make sure things kind of line up there. And the last thing, well, there's a few other things. Um, do Just make sure you really do your research. Um, research is very important. I know a lot of people don't like to do that. A lot of us like the quick and easy way, just, oh, you're good, I'll pick you up. But you got to do your research if you want to find teammates that are going to stick. Um, you know, Spend a couple days researching any players you're interested in before even contacting them. Next thing is... Put them on a trial period, and what I mean by this is, say, all right, we're going to pick you up, but it's going to be on a trial period for two weeks, or a month, or two months, whatever, and you're going to see how things go, and you're going to set times to get on and see if they stick to it, see if everybody gets along, and notice if you improve, how much you improve, um, whether or not you get along in general, and what sort of placings you're getting, things like that, so just keep notice of that, and then just kind of at the end of the trial you can make a more informed decision and there's no you know it's not as much time wasted as picking somebody up and then feeling bad and not wanting to drop them and things like that and then last thing really to remember here is to look for people that are your similar level don't be hitting people up with 20,000 pro points and you've never been to a LAN and you've never even done online tournaments, like, that person's not going to be interested in teaming with you. I'm sorry, that's just the way it works. But uh, we're running out of time, guys, so as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, then let me know what I can do better next time. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.